You are watching DHTV from California State University, Dominguez Hills. Okay, so whereas the previous presentation I covered revolutions, and I will uh, eventually uh, explain the Cuban, the Nicaraguan, and the Central American revolutions uh, in a later presentation. Now let's take a look at reforms and populist nationalism. Um, again, uh, while, while Mexico, Guatemala, Cuba, Bolivia, Nicaragua, and Central America took a, a revolutionary stand against their governments and wanted to create change, uh, it was usually a violent experience. But we're going to take a look at some countries who decided to go the nonviolent route by creating reform, and it still ended up in military dictatorship. Uh, Uruguay. Uruguay is perhaps... Uh, experimented with reform for three quarters of a century. Their constitution of 1917 through 1919 gave power to the middle class. They had direct elections, they had reduced the power of the president, and they created the National Council of Administration to share power with the president with the hope of eliminating dictatorship. They reduced the military to a minor institution, and they separated the church and the state. They had a very comprehensive program of social welfare, and there were limits put on foreign control. However, they had no land reform, which is going to haunt them later. Now, one of their most important presidents was this man named Baye. He was the most, one of the most influential of Uruguay who received popular support, especially from the urban working classes. Uh, he balanced the nation's budget. He paid foreign creditors. He strengthened the nation's currency. He nationalized the utilities. He created a social welfare program that allowed workers to organize into unions, created minimum wages, an eight-hour day, pensions and holidays but he never challenged the landed estate. So the consequences and results of that was that a middle-class nation, a democracy was created, but it was, had a European outlook. With no land reform, uh, it leads to problems because it leads to monocultural production. It created a rural to urban migration. Uh, there was a rebellion, a uh, major rebellion by native peoples for that lasted good close to 10 years, nine years. Uh, they went land reform and nationalization of natural resources so that the military eventually by 1974 is going to take over. The upper middle classes are going to call in the military. The military stops any further reforms and Uruguay is uh, changed over to military rule, authoritarian rule. Now let's go to Chile. Uh, Chile uh, experimented with reform between 1957 to 1973. Uh, the Christian Democrats who won the election uh, from 1957 to 1970. They were primarily a middle-class constituency. There was a reformation of social service section and introduction to labor codes. It was a middle-class oriented democracy. Uh, Eduardo del Frey uh, expanded suffrage, uh, no land reform. Uh, it leads to agricultural decline and our urban population increase. Uh, there's the formation of, of, of uh, farm worker unions. There's revolutionary rhetoric under Eduardo Frey, but little change. And so what's, happened, what's going to happen is it's going to lead to another radical president coming into power. His name is Salvador Allende, who uh, was part of the Unidad Popular. He implemented social reform through democratic means. He wanted land re redistributed through co-ops, the nationalization of copper, the redistribution of nation's resources, the nationalization of banks, uh, he implemented housing, employment, and education for the masses of peoples, and labor and peasant unions were going to be recognized. He provided a viable alternative to revolution, to violent confrontation. However, the military is going to be financed by the United States uh, to take over because no socialist government is going to come to power in Latin America. So there's opposition to Allende's reforms increases, and internally the middle class elites and the military are going to oppose any reform. They're going to prefer an authoritarian government to prevent change. Externally, the United States Department, especially Henry Kissinger and the CIA, are going to intervene in the uh, Salvador Allende's uh, presidency, and the U.S. is going to support a strike, a trucker strike, Firms are going to divest from Chile, causing economic chaos. The United States is going to finance the military takeover and arranges for Allende's assassination. And uh, Augusto Pinochet is going to lead a counter-revolutionary movement in 1973, and he will stay in power all the way up into the 1980s, uh, 1990s. Then there's Brazil. 
And Brazil was, was part of the reform movement. They had created uh, an old republic that was made on three alliances, a coffee elite, a middle class, and a military. Um, the military supported the elites and abandoned the middle class. And finally, the middle class is going to unite in Brazil with the working classes to replace a military elite rule and bring in a populist leader. Um, Vargas, uh, uh, Ertulo Vargas, is going to become the, the president of, uh, of this, uh, this transformation uh, from 1930 to 1945. Um, the idea is to get labor unions to be supportive. Um, he will introduce social legislation. And again, we're talking about Brazil, not Chile. Um, there's going to be turmoil that leads to democracy from 1946 to 1964. There's a creation of political parties in Brazil, the nationalization of resources. Uh, a labor, labor uh, leader is going to be elected in 1961. His name is Goulart. Uh, he will prove to be a true reformer and will restrict change, but then the military is going to take over in 1964, and Congress is going to attempt to upset uh, the reforms, especially land reform, uh, and the military will eventually stop the changes in Brazil. So that is Brazil reform ended with military dictatorship in 1964. Then there's Argentina and most everybody knows about Argentina simply because of the different films that have been made about the populist leader named Perón, Perón and his wife Evita. But this populist leader was supported by the masses so if we can go to now uh, uh, Argentina, uh, if we can put Argentina underneath um, Populist leaders supported by the masses, uh, organized labor, uh, politically uh, harnessed their power. Uh, he called them the descamisados. Uh, <clears throat> Basically, Perón provided social welfare to labor unions, health, education, housing, no land reform. Uh, again, no land reform created an inefficient agriculture. Uh, he was most popular because of his wife, Evita, because she created a woman's suffrage movement, created social aid foundations. The labor movement loved her, uh, the, but the military is going to take over. Uh, and the military will uh, uh, worsen its economic problems, and a, a democracy uh, is going to have to be challenged. Uh, uh, a, de a democracy is going to come in to challenge the military le leadership, of which you will be reading in the book. You are watching DHTV from California State University, Dominguez Hills.